Thank you for joining us this afternoon for this next webinar in ATA's educational webinar series. Today's session is Rocket Engine Performance Analysis with SimCenter AIMSIM System Simulation with our guest speaker, Brian Benoit from Siemens Digital Industries Software. Before we launch into the session proper, let me just give a quick introduction to our host, ATA Engineering, so that uh, everyone knows a little bit about ATA. So ATA is an employee-owned small business headquartered in San Diego, San Diego California, with a full-time staff of over 190, with uh, gusts over 200 with our active intern and co-op program. Uh, we have a high degree of education and technical accomplishment uh, in a number of different industries with the uh, Society of Experimental Mechanics, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, AIAA, and many more. ATA Engineering provides high value engineering services to help our customers solve their toughest product design challenges. We work in a number of industries, uh, notably aerospace and defense, uh, with a growing practice in uh, spacecraft, satellites, hypersonics, and composites, and even in themed entertainment like uh, roller coasters, animatronic figures, and the like. We provide services to customers nationwide from uh, our many offices, headquarters being in San Diego, California, but we also have offices in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Denver, Albuquerque, Huntsville, Alabama, where I am myself located, and in Herndon, Virginia, outside Washington, DC. And from these nationwide offices, we provide advanced design, analysis, and test services. One of the other things we provide is we provide uh, licensing and support for Siemens engineering software. We are, in fact, a Siemens platinum level value-added reseller selling a wide range of Siemens solutions. We provide licensing and support for NX, NASTRAN, FEMAP, Star CCM Plus, all the SimCenter products, including HEADS and AIMSIM, Team Center, Solid Edge, and many more. In fact, uh, ATA Engineering it, are the authors of the NASTRAN training material for Siemens. So if you ever go to a Siemens training class on NASTRAN, you're seeing the fruits of our labors. And in fact, many of these classes are held at those same locations you saw on the map in Los Angeles or San Jose or Huntsville, et cetera, because those classes are being provided by ATA instructors. Today's presenter is Brian Benoit from Siemens Digital Industry Software. Brian is an expert on 1D system simulation modeling and he's going to be speaking to us today about uh, specifically the modeling of liquid-fueled rocket engines and thrusters and how to model those systems in AIMSIM. Take it away, Brian. All righty, thank you very much, Scott. Uh, we'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay, um, so yeah, uh, thanks again, Scott. So my name is Brian Benoit. Um, I am a, a senior solutions consultant with Siemens. Um, I, I focus in the system simulation domain, um, which covers a, a, a wide variety of um, tools uh, and, um, and analysis uh, um, tasks. Uh, so we're going to start out today uh, zooming out just a little bit. Um, so uh, the system simulation is actually um, uh, is actually a portfolio, and it um, it sits within a a, a larger portfolio uh, within Siemens that's called SimCenter. Um, and so a, a little quote here from uh, from one of our uh, leaders at Siemens is uh, SimCenter really is the the beating heart of the comprehensive digital twin, um, meaning that uh, it's really critical uh, to, uh, to understand the performance of the things that you are uh, building. Um, and so our customers, um, you know, they use other Siemens products to manage the product lifecycle, um, but uh, really the connection on, on, on the design of uh, the products that our customers make 
uh, really is uh, SimCenter. And so within SimCenter, there's a number of different uh, kind of uh, domain sections and uh, system simulation is one of those domains. So I, I really won't spend uh, any time talking about the other uh, domains within SimCenter, but um, it is important to know that the, uh, uh, the SimCenter portfolio is a very vast uh, portfolio and, and ATA has uh, uh, many uh, domain experts in, in um, many of these different areas within SimCenter. Uh, and specifically within the system simulation uh, subsection of the portfolio is uh, one of our authoring tools that I'm gonna be talking about today called SimCenter AIMSIM. And so just at a high level, it is a uh, systems physics-based uh, simulation platform. Um, and it can really support uh, pretty much every phase of the development cycle uh, of, a, of a product engineering project or program. Um, and it, uh, as you'll see uh, through, you know, some of my demonstrations, uh, you're, you're going to see an extensive library of uh, multi-physics components. So these are all uh, off-the-shelf uh, components that come with AIMSIM. Um, and you can, you know, construct pretty much any type of model um, that you would, uh, that you could imagine. So, you know, we're going to talk about rocket engines today, but uh, here's a fun little video about a, uh, a truck doing rollover uh, vehicle dynamics types of analysis. Um, so uh, th there are, there's an extensive set of libraries and they cover a wide range of physical domains uh, and application areas. Um, and that really allows us to, um, uh, to do just uh, pretty much any type of analysis that, uh, that you could imagine. So if I'm a, uh, you know, if I'm developing a rocket engine or if I'm in the, uh, the space industry, you know, why, why would I be interested in AIMSIM um, kind of as a simulation platform? And there's kind of three takeaways that are most applicable here. One is that um, we consider ourselves an open platform. So that doesn't mean that our uh, source code for our uh, components is, <laughs> is open source, um, but, we, uh, we're open in the sense that we can um, consume legacy code. <clears throat> um, so uh, for example, we can compile, uh, you know, Fort Fortran code that may exist, um, you know, in the depths of the engineering uh, groups uh, within uh, some, some space customers. Um, and we can, uh, we can reimagine that code or kind of re-execute it and bring that into the AIMSIM platform so that you don't uh, lose legacy uh, capabilities, uh, you're actually enhancing those. Um, we're also open in the sense that we uh, can couple with lots of different <clears throat> other types of analysis tools. Um, and uh, so, and that can be third party or through, um, the, or just inside of SimCenter. Um, so, you know, some examples here you can see on the bottom left and uh, would be like multi-body uh, dynamics or computational fluid dynamics. These are uh, generally the most common um, uh, coupling applications, but uh, others that kind of aren't listed here would be um, uh, coupling to basically like a real-time uh, or exporting your code for a real-time um, target to run on a real-time target in conjunction with other uh, real-time uh, simulations. So, um, lots of options for taking what you're doing in AIMSIM and, and using it somewhere else. Uh, the second main takeaway is that uh, it's, uh, the, the platform itself is scalable and multi-physics. Um, and I had mentioned earlier, we've got off-the-shelf libraries that span a lot of different domains. Um, uh, it's also scalable. And so the, the fact that we have all these different components that make up all these different libraries um, actually lends itself to you being able to represent uh, uh, one thing in several different ways. Um, and so that allows you to uh, build fidelity in your model where you need it and uh, leave things at a functional level for areas of the model that you don't need fidelity. So it's, it's, it's both a wide offering and a very scalable offering. 
that's available. And then lastly um, is the dynamic simulation. Uh, and so this is, this is key for uh, basically everything past your power budgeting. Um, you know, if you're doing uh, uh, power analysis and, and architecture selection for steady state and you're trying to run a bunch of points, um, that is something you can do in the tool, but really the, the, main, the main value of using the uh, AIMSIM as a simulation platform is for running dynamic simulations. Um, and the dynamic simulations get you the uh, ability to start uh, maybe integrating your control logic um, and uh, per performing those in the loop testing. So you can start developing and validating your control logic um, before you actually have any physical uh, prototype hardware available on a test stand. So that's really one of the main, um, main benefits of, of using AIMSIM as a simulation platform. Um, I'm going to get into a couple of uh, space specific application areas, and then I'm going to show an example um, that is, uh, it's actually based off of, a, off of a paper that does a trade off on um, uh, different types of um, architecture uh, types um, on uh, the same kind of common engine. So, um, uh, so just real briefly here, and I don't really want to take too much time so that we can get to the demonstration, but um, our uh, different different application areas, AIMSIM has been used for uh, space actuation. So, uh, you know, things like thrust vector control or for steering systems um, and even uh, pyrotechnic actuators. Uh, and so modeling, uh, modeling the pyrotechnics uh, and the hot gas that's created and then sending that through um, uh, uh, mechanical actuators, for an example, for separation systems. Um, so AIMSIM has been used uh, in those domains. <clears throat> uh, pyrotechnics also uh, includes um, uh, so solid rocket motors. Um, so I'm going to talk about liquid propulsion. Uh, our example today is going to be liquid propulsion, um, but we uh, we can also use AIMSIM to uh, model uh, solid rocket motors as well. Uh, and then also I missed uh, ejection seats is another. Um, um, interesting application area. We uh, have also used AIMSIM to model uh, satellite propulsion. So not just launch vehicle propulsion systems, um, but satellite propulsion systems as well. Um, and that's been at different levels. So, you know, maybe at the component level, um, uh, there's a need to, uh, uh, if there's a supplier, for example, that, that makes xenon pressure regulators, uh, they probably don't need to model the entire uh, propulsion system, uh, but they might need to, um, they might have a very high interest in making sure that the pressure regulator uh, works very well. So you can get a real high, uh, high fidelity model of that um, put together. And there's an example that we can see here on the screen. Um, and then uh, other might be just uh, uh, cold gas thrusters or uh, hypergolic thrusters um, that, that may exist on a, um, on a satellite uh, platform. Okay, so um, I briefly went through just a couple of example uh, use cases or application areas. Um, really our focus today is gonna be talking about electrically driven versus gas generator driven turbo pumps um, and, and doing a trade-off study on um, um, an engine configuration that's set up to model both of those. So uh, visually, that's uh, this is a good, good way of showing that. So ultimately what we need is, is two models, right? And so the, the model is gonna be um, identical except for these parts that you can see uh, highlighted in the green box uh, and the orange box uh, and then the purple box. So um, the, the normal or the kind of more standard configuration is using a gas generator uh, to drive your uh, um, uh, basically a turbine and the turbo pumps. Uh, but here, um, the interest is actually to use, uh, to replace that with a, a motor. Um, and so uh, initially that, you know, that does sound like a pretty good idea, but then you realize, okay, well, motors are heavy and uh, you got to put a battery in there and those are heavy. Um, and you probably need to cool that battery. 
Um, so uh, it does lend itself to um, uh, being something that is uh, worth a significant amount of investigation. And this was actually done um, uh, in uh, South Korea. Uh, so there's a paper down here um, that, uh, that this work is, um, is based off of. So just a little bit of specifics about just the technical um, uh, objectives of the, uh, of the simulation or of the analysis. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all the different parameters, but basically we have boundaries uh, set up here for what the electric motor inverter requirements would be um, and how it might be cooled. And so all of this is, uh, is described in uh, the paper. Um, same with the battery. Uh, what time of battery uh, uh, chemistry. Uh, all of this stuff is, is accounted for in the AIMSIM models uh, as they are built. Um, and something to note on the battery here, um, there was a requirement that was interesting and we'll get back to that um, when we look at the results, the analysis results, but the uh, maximum, uh, there is a requirement that you, you're, if you're gonna cool uh, the battery, you don't wanna uh, increase that, uh, uh, in this case, it's actually, you're gonna cool it with RP1, with the, with the fuel. Um, so you don't wanna increase that fuel by uh, the temperature more than 40 degrees Kelvin. Um, so that's, that's an important thing uh, to keep in mind there. Oops, in terms of uh, the pumps, uh, so you've got pumps for both the liquid oxygen and the, and the fuel, which um, as I mentioned is, uh, is RP1. Um, you've got some requirements for what the densities need, to, uh, power densities, and uh, all of this stuff gets um, put into, it gets put into parameters uh, that are based on the, the suitor uh, curves for characterizing pumps. Um, now with the tanks, uh, there's some, uh, you know, some information that's input. Uh, ultimately, this information is used uh, to compute the solid mass. Um, and, and then the volume of the tank. And so you can see here, there's a little visualization showing uh, how those tanks are, um, um, are, are basically used within AIMSIM. So we have some tools, some embedded tools uh, within um, the libraries that allow you to um, import the, the tank geometry. Um, and you can even fill the volume inside that uh, tank and, uh, and then you can slice that tank up so you can, um, you can represent that tank at uh, different attitudes and different um, external forces and accelerations that would be acting on that tank. And that may change the center of gravity of the tank and um, um, uh, thermal characteristics of uh, how the heat is uh, transferred on the walls of the tanks. Um, so all those are very uh, important things that are uh, considered when you're setting up the tank models. <clears throat> uh, and again, the gas turbine, or sorry, the gas generator and the turbine uh, is all, um, is all uh, accounted for here. And then the, uh, the combustion chamber and nozzle um, thrust is, is actually, uh, I think, more or less a, a, a target to hit. Uh, not really, uh, this is more of an output of the model, not really an input. Um, but maybe a target to, to get close to. Um, but uh, definitely things like mixture ratio and um, making sure that your model uh, ultimately is producing this type of uh, performance uh, is important. Uh, a key thing to, to note is the study that we're going to show uh, today has uh, a burn time for 300 or for 1200 seconds. Um, so that would depend on um, Kind of which uh, probably which stage this is uh, this is going to be uh, used for. So it's intended to be um, different uh, scenarios, <clears throat> and um, there are a little bit of differences from the paper that we're referencing here. Um, I don't really think I need to go too much into the the detail here, but basically um, there are aspects of the paper that are unknown that are not published. Um, and so we, um, our Siemens team was, was just needed to make some assumptions. So an example, uh, the cooling jacket around that, uh, the, around that nozzle and combustion chamber is not published um, and not surprisingly so, right? So uh, we just used um, the cooling jacket that's based on the RL10A engine, which is a, another demonstrator that's inside uh, AIMSIM. 
just comes uh, available with AIMSIM in the demo uh, help menu. There's also some other assumptions about combustion um, and, uh, and uh, pressure losses um, for the valves, uh, not, not really considered uh, for, for this paper and therefore it's also not considered in this, uh, in this workup. So you can see in this picture, uh, ultimately you have um, some requirements for uh, combustion chamber pressure, uh, the uh, reference vacuum thrust and the mixture ratio. Um, and so that's, that's what this center bar here is. Uh, and the, uh, the results of the models show the comparison of the uh, gas generator and the, electric, um, um, the electrically uh, driven turbo pumps. Um, so you can see we're, we're pretty much in the ballpark uh, there for the results, but we're um, going to um, uh, get into a lot more into the detail there. So before I get into the results, I'll just show you the models here. Um, so I've got AIMSIM uh, popped up. <clears throat> and uh, here, this is the, the AIMSIM platform. And you can see that we've got a number of uh, libraries uh, that, are, that would be available. And I actually, I'm not showing all of them, so I can actually show you all the libraries if we want. I'll just select them all. So you can see over here, there's a, a very large list of uh, off the shelf libraries that span multiple domains. Um, and so this model is a, uh, is a multi-physics model. So it's, it's actually utilizing um, our two-phase flow library, our gas mixture library, our thermal library. Our, uh, we call it our aircraft fuel systems library, and which is uh, true in this case, because we're modeling the locks and the, uh, uh, the RP1 as, um, uh, as liquids. And um, uh, let's see, what else do we have? Oh, and our electrical library here. So in this example, uh, in this model, this is a model that's set up to run for 300 seconds. Um, so it'd be like a first stage type of uh, simulation. And you can see that there's the battery and the electric machine here. Um, and we've routed uh, some cooling uh, properties. So we're, uh, we're cooling the motor with locks and we're uh, dumping a little bit of that locks overboard basically. Um, and then we're cooling the uh, battery pack with RP1. Um, and that's what this uh, little circuit here is as well. Um, and I'll just go ahead and run these simulations uh, just to show you, you know, what kind of time scale you're looking at uh, for completing like a 300 second run. Um, it, it just takes a couple of seconds uh, to get the run uh, completed. And uh, we have features that kind of give the user warnings. Um, here, these are a bunch of warnings that uh, don't necessarily matter. They happen right at the initial uh, time step. Um, but um, the, uh, the tool itself is intended to kind of let you know if the if the system you know you might need to question the results or if the uh, system is computing things outside of boundaries for um, uh, you know validity ranges for gas definitions or or, or what have you. Um, so we just ran this simulation for 300 seconds. I've actually done that for the gas generator version that's here, uh, and then also for the 1200 uh, second uh, variance as well. Um, we also have the ability to um, basically plot anything we want. So like if I wanted to just look at the um, rotor relative speed, or if I wanted to plot the torque of that motor, um, you can see there's not a whole lot that's, that's super interesting uh, when it comes to the electrical side of this simulation. Maybe if I wanted to plot the uh, um, performance data of the nozzle, I could see that uh, the thrust is about this. Um, and so really the main interest of this model is not, uh, in this case, it's not necessarily uh, the like starting dynamics or anything like that. It's really just comparing the two architectures against each other. Um, so we can save plots as well. Um, and really what we're going to show in the, uh, in the final results of the presentation, let's see. 
oh something must be wrong with my something must be wrong with my uh with my chart here let me see if this one shows if i need to show this one okay so the bar charts i must have broken them somehow mass bar chart okay we can see this one Gotcha. Okay, so uh, we'll we'll show the comparisons and when I get back to the slides, um, but we can actually look kind of uh, one by one at the mass bar chart for that one and for this one, and kind of start doing a side by side comparison here. Um, and so you can see I can scroll through time. So as we burn through time, uh, what you would expect is that the uh, propellant mass becomes the overall driver, which is absolutely the case um, and you can kind of see at the end of 300 seconds uh, what the breakdown is um, and i think the more interesting thing is looking in in terms of bar chart uh, and you actually can see at the 300 second mark um, it looks like the electrical configuration if we're if we're doing a mass breakdown of all the different parts um, the electrical configuration is a little bit heavier, not by a lot, but a little bit heavier. Um, and so uh, that is something to keep in mind. I mean, if it's, um, if it's heavier, it better be a whole lot easier to build, for example. So there's, there's some trade-offs to, to be thinking about there. Um, now, if we look at the 1200 second breakdowns, Is getting organized here. Uh, we can actually conclude uh, that because of the savings, so you're uh, so at the 300 second mark, uh, the weight addition has not really outweighed uh, the um, the savings that you would get in uh, burning propellant through your gas generator. But um, the 1200 second mark, it, you can actually start to see a, a difference. And so the, uh, the propellant that you're saving by not burnt, running it through a gas generator starts to become pretty evident uh, in the mass, in the global mass breakdown uh, when you're comparing the two, uh, the two architectures. So that's one of the most important things um, and, and basically the, the main output of this, uh, this trade-off here is, is taking, uh, is understanding uh, that. So if we go look, I think I have a few more charts to show um, that can kind of um, uh, illustrate that. I just showed these two examples here where you can see, you know, uh, electric being uh, more useful uh, with a, the longer the burn uh, of, the, of the scenario is. Um, and something else to show here is, um, let's see so what was it uh burn time oh yeah with the battery temperature um and so the requirement that i mentioned earlier uh about uh making sure that the battery stays within a temperature range and is also um not heating up the uh propellant fuel or sorry in this case it's the locks uh sorry i apologize it is the rp1 on the battery pack um so uh if the requirement is more than, than 40 uh, degrees Kelvin, the 300 second is, is actually not, um, is not reaching that requirement, but uh, the 1200 second is. Um, so that's also something interesting to, uh, to note from this uh, exploration. They also uh, identified uh, some other conclusions or some future work that they might wanna do. Um, but uh, ultimately, they were able to uh, take a look at the trade-off of these kind of unique uh, rocket engine architecture or a, a unique rocket engine architecture compared to kind of a more traditional one to see if there would be any value in kind of exploring that design further. Um, they also confirmed mass and power budget balance trends um, through simulation. Uh, and they, they also learned that there are probably some areas to explore, um, one of those being uh, an adequate cooling strategy uh, for the battery and the, uh, the electric motor and the inverter. Um, there, there could be some potential red flags there um, 
might need to get a little bit smarter uh, and have a um, maybe a dynamic control of the uh, uh, of the setup for for cooling those devices. Okay, so um, I walked through the example there, a trade-off. We talked a little bit about the uh, the other applications within space that are um, more or less related to propulsion. Um, so I'll wrap up with some uh, some conclusions here. Uh, some main takeaway points is that um, we are using SimCenter AIMSIM in the space industry in the U.S. Uh, and we are uh, we are supporting any uh, any kind of engine architecture. Um, we can use AIMSIM and our customers are using AIMSIM to develop and test their control strategies using high fidelity plant models. Um, the, the platform itself is open um, and it also, uh, it, when you need to use it in other tools and integrate, uh, there are capabilities for you to uh, protect your IP uh, while also being able to, um, to utilize other people's um, uh, other people's software uh, or uh, platforms. <clears throat> uh, fundamentally, the, the platform is multi-physics and multi-level. Um, I think I showed a little bit of that today. Um, and you uh, ultimately, the, the name of the game is reducing costs at an early stage and um, aiming to avoid integration issues. Um, so uh, the more simulation you can do up front, uh, we all know the, the, the better uh, the better those two things are. And lastly, I didn't get into it in this presentation, um, but um, I did describe uh, a little bit about some of our embedded tools. Um, we do have embedded tools uh, that are dedicated for the liquid propulsion um, library that include um, uh, tools that help you characterize the, uh, the turbo pumps in the turbines, uh, tools that allow you to characterize the nozzles and combustion chamber, um, um, combustion products definitions. We can uh, integrate with, uh, with CEA or with uh, other um, com um, kind of chemical equilibrium analysis tools uh, that exist out there. And, um, oh yeah, and then the last one I, I did mention in the presentation earlier was about the uh, the the tanks so the propel the propellant tank uh, imports uh, you can uh, you can actually bring the geometry in and map the exact geometry for your um, cryogenic tanks or for your uh, just pure liquid tanks as well. So with that, I can uh, I can open it up for questions. I appreciate everybody's time today. Great, Here's thank you very much, Brian. Page. I think we probably will have a few questions. Um, so we'll uh, go into our Q&A session now. Pat, so we encourage you to keep submitting those, or if you would like to um, be unmuted to just have a conversation, please message us that as well and, and we can make that happen. Um, first question is, does AIMSIM have rocket propellant thermodynamic equations of state for flow models? Yes. Um, so, and we can actually model the fuel uh, or the propellants uh, in a number of different assumptions. So if we wanted to model uh, liquid oxygen purely as a liquid and we were uh, really am interested in a lot of the higher dynamics that maybe come with like water hammer or uh, cavitation. Uh, we can we have definitions for liquid oxygen just as a pure liquid, um, but we can also define that uh, with uh, equations of state uh, that are found in the same equations of state that are found in RefProp. Um, so we have locks. Uh, I see here, you know. Uh, uh, hydrogen, parahydrogen, methane. Um, and then RP1 is actually uh, uh, a liquid at, at room temperature. So uh, we do have an RP1 uh, fluid definition uh, in our thermal hydraulic library. And it might be worth noting, I guess I could add to that, uh, Jonathan is uh, in, our, in, our, uh, in our upcoming releases, uh, we're always adding 
um, uh, fluid definitions. And this is not just specific to uh, the space industry, but we're, uh, our, our product team is always uh, receiving feedback from customers and we're always adding to our fluid databases, um, which makes it easier. Our customers don't have to build custom fluid definitions, right? So we're, we're always building and one of those um, definitions is in the storables. Um, so we've actually got a really exciting um, um, set of demonstrators that's coming in our next uh, uh, release of AIMSIM that's uh, focused on um, uh, hypergolic propulsion system modeling. Um, and included in those are uh, fluid definitions that are going to come standard with AIMSIM for all the different types of hypergolic uh, uh, propellants that are, that are out there. from the chat, um, what sort of embedded capability does AIMSIM have for optimization and can it be driven by HEADS as well for optimization? Yeah, that's a great question. So AIMSIM does have its own embedded optimization uh, tools. However, they're, um, they're limited. Uh, so I would not, you know, I would not lean on AIMSIM to uh, to uh, be the best tool to uh, do all or uh, to, to handle any kind of optimization problem that you might have with your system. Um, but we do have a basically an, um, um, a gradient-based uh, local um, uh, uh, solver. And then um, we, well, not a solver, but a, a method that's integrated. And we also have a, um, a global search that's, uh, that's implemented inside AIMSIM uh, that's um, on a genetic uh, algorithm. Those are the two optimization methods that exist within AIMSIM. And you can do a lot there, um, but really uh, you can open up your, uh, your design space and your exploration uh, by connecting AIMSIM with HEADS. Um, and so HEADS is another product that lives within our STEM Center portfolio. Um, and uh, it has uh, effectively all of the uh, optimization methods uh, in integrated into, um, into HEADS, and then it can um, adaptively select between those as it's searching through the design space. Um, so that's, uh, there's a connector for, for AIMSIM um, within HEADS, uh, along with uh, pretty much all of our SimCenter uh, products and a, a huge suite of uh, third-party tools as well. We have a number of other webinars that we put on, including one coming up next week um, on HEADS. So if that is interesting to anyone, uh, please go check out. Yeah, there we go. Here's our recording for next week or our, our registration page. Um, but anyway, Scott, I think that's all the questions. So I'm going to throw things back over to you. Brian, thanks for the great presentation. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Very good. Thanks again, Brian. Really do appreciate it. Um, this is the registration page for next week's uh, webinar, which is on optimization of hypersonic air breathing engines uh, with Star CCM Plus and HEADS. Uh, but we do these, uh, these webinars pretty regularly. And uh, uh, please you know, pay attention to the, uh, the notices in your email. Come back regularly to our website where you can find the, uh, the latest schedule. There's also a rich library of previously recorded webinars. And in fact, this webinar itself has been recorded and will be available for uh, you or any of your colleagues who were unable to make it today who would like to hear what Brian had to say. If you have any questions about any of the products that we've mentioned here today, whether it's AIMSIM, HEAT, Star CCM Plus, or any of the other fine Siemens software tools, please feel free to reach out to me at the contact information on your screen. And thank you for joining us today for this webinar from ATA Engineering and Siemens Digital Industry Software. And we'll see you at the next session. Thank you very much. <laughs>